our final speaker is uh, an archivist emeritus of the, um, Emera, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Uh, he served as president of the Society of California Archivists. Uh, he has curated or helped curate film programs on American silent comedy films for many August organizations, uh, such as the Los Angeles International Film Exposition and the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, he's also researched and written on the early silent comedy films, most notably uh, detailed filmographies for various early film companies and a book that has become well known to silent film fans. Welcome, Sam Gill. These are obviously the diehards, my kind of people. <laughs> I think without further ado, uh, maybe if we could lower the lights there, and uh, I'll go ahead and get going on the slides, and then be able to see a movie, which is, after all, that's not what we're really here to see movies. <laughs> Where it all starts, in my opinion, uh, as far as the little brand of films that were called Snakeville comedies, they were all, well, almost all made in uh, Niles, California from 1911 to 1906, uh, well, late 1915. And the man who really is, I think, needs to receive credit for originating the whole concept of this mythical village of Snakeville, which bears a certain resemblance to Niles, California, is G.M. Anderson. So Bronco Billy, here is what he really looked like when he, uh, qu quite a snappy and dapper man in, when he was not in, uh, in his cowboy outfit. And we have Jess Robbins. This is another important figure in the Snakeville history and also SNA history, who was a very close associate of uh, Bronco Billy's and uh, was a cameraman as well as a director for many films. And Roy Clements was a director as well, a very prominent comedy director with good skills in that area of uh, per particularly uh, 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 Western style comedy, and went there to work at Universal as well. Then the cameraman, let us not forget, here's Jess Robbins up to his, well, I don't know what I should say, that or not, but uh, in, uh, in the river with his camera, and this is so typical what cameramen have had to go through from the beginning of film to uh, today. They're still putting their lives on the line and they're getting wet in the process. And here we have uh, Ira Morgan, another one of the top cameramen for SNA. You can see he has the logo there on, his, on his, the breast part of his uh, sweater. One of my favorites, <laughs> Raleigh. This is Raleigh Tothero, and uh, I have the great, great pleasure of actually having met Raleigh Tothero myself when I was about 19 years old, and I came out to Los Angeles to interview the early film people that I had the good fortune to find, and he was at the Motion Picture Country House at that time, and and said, ask, ask away. <laughs> Any question you'd like to ask. I had a great uh, good fortune to having met Raleigh. And here we have uh, Ira Morgan with a mustache by that time, and Raleigh, and Harris Ensign. I'll move along. This we have, uh, thanks to David's keen eye, he, this is uh, Mervyn Breslauer here, and Howard West, and uh, Martin Killalay. Raleigh again on the set with uh, Roy Clements here at SNA. I love those pictures. <laughs> the films did have scenarios, believe it or not. <laughs> Josephine Rector was a scenario editor out here at the Western Studio. Luella Parsons was actually the head of the scenario department in, in Chicago. The same Luella Parsons who became the gossip columnist. And George Cantwell. Now we'll go to the stars of the series. Uh, again, the, those 104 films that were made as part of the series. This is Augustus Carney, born in Ireland, uh, came to this country, worked a variety of kinds of jobs, and became quite a big star in the early days of film from not, around 1910 to around 1914 or so. Uh, after SNA, he went to Universal and became, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll I'll tell you that his, the name he used here in the Snakeville comedies was, was Alkali Ike. 
And when he went to Universal, he became Universal Ike. <laughs> so anyway, uh, no one knows what happened to him. But around 1918, he seems to disappear. And uh, no one, to my knowledge, knows what happened to him. Here he is in this character of Alkali Ike. And uh, if you're wondering, I thought, what is that? Uh, it's an Indian motorcycle. And uh, there's a wonderful lady behind him uh, who's... Uh, grandson will be here. Uh, I guess he's not here. Or oh, you are. You haven't said hello. <laughs> Todd Peters, the grandson of this wonderful lady back here, Margaret Joslin. And due to his gr gracious help, there's a portrait that we, that David and I have been able to have copied for the, tonight of his grandmother, Margaret Joslin. I think she was a beautiful lady. The character she played was named Sophie Klutz. <laughs> but the truth is, I don't think she was klut klutzy at all, so that's the irony of that. And here she is in an early film. And this gentleman you will hear about in this one, too. This is Victor Potel, Harry Todd. And then there was a character actress named Evelyn Selby, who was in many of these films, often played fortune tellers or sultry vamps or that kind of roles. This is the man that uh, Margaret Jocelyn married many years before she was working in the films at SNA, and that's Harry Todd. Harry Todd used another a colorful name. Here he is as a, as in a comedy pose. Mustang Pete is his role. This is Victor Potel, looking very dapper, I must say. That, that collar, if it were any higher, he'd choke to death, I think. But, and here is, again, Victor Potel and with Niles in the background and with Lillian Christie my, on the left. This is such a typical scene from a Snakeville comedy. Uh, Victor Potel and Harry Todd were always at odds. I mean, almost always, not, not every time, but in most of the scenarios, they were in a fight or jealous about so, uh, or there was some other little prank that one was playing on the other. Uh, you can see here, there's Victor Potel, and you can see he's kind of, uh, he's pulled something on uh, Harry Todd there, Margaret Jocelyn in the center, but he got his comeuppance here. <laughs> he, he's definitely got his, uh, the, with Harry here and Victor there. And here's another early film. When Slippery Slim met the champion, and in this, they all help him, win the prize of $100. He beats the world champion. That film doesn't exist, unfortunately. Fred Church was another prominent person in the Bronco Billy films and Snakeville films. He played Coyote Simpson and sometimes Rawhide Bill. That was his nickname. Here he is in a, a very early and interesting film. Uh, at least it looks interesting. I don't believe it exists either, but it was called Alkali Ike and the Hypnotist. If you ever had this here, but I know as a child in Kansas, as I was growing up, there were often hypnotists who were brought as performers. And they would hypnotize people. You know, people would come up and they'd hypnotize them on the stage and then have them do absolutely outrageous things <laughs> and very embarrassing things. And this is, I think, a takeoff on that. And that's Fred Church here. And Augustus Carney is here. And Harry Todd there. Evelyn Selby, I see back there. And Victor Patel and many other. David Keene knows everyone in the background, too. <laughs> But anyway, this is, uh, shows you an ensemble style of acting that every, I mean, not always was one the star of the film at this particular period of time. And there you have another great scene with uh, a couple of jealous lovers in the background and Fred Church seems to be making a little more headway. I think uh, Sophie's a little more interested in Fred or Coyote uh, Simpson there. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, herald that uh, on the back of a, of a, a herald that uh, David has, has received recently. And it's kind of interesting to have Alkali Pete's. I mean, that's, that makes you wonder, well, was that a name that they were going to use at that time? Or It has occurred to me, too, that it might have been a British name. I know sometimes they switch names uh, of characters for England for, and use different names. So that's the only other idea I had about that. And... Uh, this is a, a, a beautiful herald. 
shows these were usually uh, uh, handouts that the theaters were they could buy oh like five cents for a thousand or so I mean and now of course they cost yeah lots of money to if you if you can find them here's uh, the last film that uh, Augustus Carney who's right here is Alkali Ike that he made here before he left and went to uh, uh, down south Universal uh, this is pretty much the nice little group that uh, continued to make films for about two years uh, solid. At one point, they were turning out one a week. Uh, I, I can't imagine the, the drain that that was on them to be turning out a full reel of comedy once a week. Here you have Jess Robbins, um, Victor Patel mugging, I think. I'm not sure why he's mugging. Tom Kreiser. Uh, there we have Margaret. Uh, Jess Robbins, as I mentioned, this is Carl Stockdale, and uh, this is Bud Jerome um, Anderson, who was Bronco Billy's brother. And unfortunately, we just can't quite see True Boardman standing here in makeup, and a fellow named Jack Roberts. And there's a, another typical scene, Josephine Rector, who was an actress as well as Ned. A lot of people doubled or tripled jobs. Uh, there are persistent rumors that... Uh, Ben Turpin was a carpenter for a while, even though he had been a star at SNA earlier, that he was also a carpenter here. And again, I've learned that through David's interviews that he's had with people, that, that people said that, uh, that some, Ben Turpin was a star, but at a certain time he was a carpenter <laughs> here at the studio. There's another wonderful scene. Uh, I think an unusual thing about Margaret Jocelyn, and one reason her series, uh, the Snakeville series, of apart from others, was that she didn't often really burlesque her character. She was more a genuine, believable, and sympathetic person. And uh, I think that was kind of unusual for comedians of the time. And she, in fact, gave a wonderful interview at the time where she does talk about that that was something that uh, Mr. Anderson, as she called him, Mr. Anderson wanted, and I was happy to give that, you know, as a more serious kind of performance. And she felt like some of the greatest comedians and humorists were, were actually uh, uh, based their humor on genuine, real-life situations rather than the, the, the constant mugging. Uh, this is David Kirkland. He played often uh, like doctor, this is his role of Dr. Dopam. Uh, <laughs> Snake, my dad was a doctor, I'm sure you'd appreciate that. Uh, but I think it's interesting how Snakeville often would pick uh, as storylines things in the news at the time, like patent medicines. I think there's one there, isn't there? Yeah, all kinds of patent medicines that he has. Doctor, you can see the Dr. Dopium, is, but it's Dopam. Uh, and of course, the uh, all kinds of uh, health, you know, fads, that sort of thing, and uh, drugs, and was sometimes used in their comedies and and uh, news events of like el special elixirs that would. There was one called High Life. Uh, see, uh, High Life gets slippery slim, and this is where he's given this elixir, and he goes kind of bananas. <laughs> Evelyn Selby, she was a, a, a good uh, rider with, on horses and was also a good actress and played in films for many years. I think we've got Tom Kreiser. And uh, this was Texas George Briggs. Again, with David's help, he said, well, you know, he was a sharpshooter, and a lot of the scenes where Bronco Billy would pick off things, he was act it was actually this fellow over here with his rifle. And Bill Cato on his horse. Lee Willard, his daughter Helen. Carl Stockdale, he was a stage actor. You sometimes had cowboys, sometimes you had really professional stage actors, which is the case with Carl Stockdale. It was really kind of like a family, and his brother and father also worked here at the studio. And this picture, I thought, you know, it was like a family, and somehow, you know, you saw, hear all these people you know, around the piano with Margaret Jocelyn singing away. And I thought, you know, I just feel like I'm there with them. And if, if I'm correct, I think this is True Boardman there. Okay, Ben Turpin uh, had been at SNA in the very, very early days and was actually probably the first 
comedian and one of the first actors to ever have a bylined article in, in a film publication in 1909. And uh, so he was one of the first people to really be known by name in film. And this was taken a little bit later. He became, of course, famous with the crossed eyes and when he put a little mustache on himself like that. He had played a happy hooligan character on the stage. And I think some of this, uh, his personality and screen was developed from the happy hooligan comic strip character. Uh, this was a film, actually the last true Snakeville film that was made in uh, 1915, in late 1915. And I'm pretty sure this is Lloyd Bacon, who was later a famous director in Hollywood. I think I'm correct on that. And then I believe Harry Todd here. And now a curious thing would happen is that uh, SNA generated so much film, I think they're making a film a week, you know, not going to use all of that film, and some things maybe didn't, weren't quite right, or maybe they had ex, you know, enough film in the can to last a few months, but when they closed down the operation here, there must have been quite a film, a, a, quite a bit of film left, and uh, it, over the next year to two years, there would be some Snakeville films <laughs> that were not really advertised as such, but that's really what they were. For one reason, you can know they were made here is this still code. Down there is a Niles still code. And uh, so this made in Niles, but it was released uh, a, a nearly a year after the series supposedly ended. And uh, then there was also uh, some two reelers and three reelers that were made uh, clear up to 1917 that have uh, one was called Pete's Pants uh, and, or Snakeville's Debutantes, and it was copyrighted as a, a three-reel film, and it seems to be cobbled together from a lot of film that was made many years before. And I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting little finale to the whole series, that somehow they were even two years still issuing films, that I think there must have been such interest in it by the audience. It was sort of like, here's something almost from yesterday, but it's really scenes that you've never seen before. And so, of course, this is the, the SNA is just to kind of to say farewell to SNA and goodbye to our end in logo. So that's really it. We'll now look at the film. I have, with David's help, put together a filmography, which are available to, if you have family members who worked in the Snakeville comedies, they hopefully will be in this. If not, tell me and we'll, we'll get them in there. Thank you.